How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about when you should start investing at the bottom of the market. I talked about me making a video when I thought it's going to be time. Instead, I'm going to talk about a few indicators that I'm personally looking for before I start investing in the market 100%. Now this situation, when I talked about it maybe two weeks ago, people thought that it's not finance related. But in fact, right now, so much of the stock market is controlled by this situation that it's probably best that you follow the news to try and figure out where your money is going. Because if you know what's gonna happen, it just kind of means you kind of know where your money is gonna go in the future. So it's very important, I think, for everyone to keep on top of all this news. Here's the first thing I'm looking for, which is a decrease in the number of new cases every single day. So we want to see a deceleration of new cases probably consecutively for two or three days. Now, this is only a tiny indicator because it could be a fluke over two, three days. Maybe someone didn't count all the new cases or whatnot. So you need to see it somewhat consistent going forward before you can start to say, okay, this might be the bottom of the stock market. What I do believe right now is that all the measures being taken, the measures are very, very different from city to city. Even with this semi lockdown thing where they just kind of suggest you to stay put and then people can still walk the dog and whatnot. I feel like this is not enough. We need the entire country to be on strict lockdown and people just cannot transmit it anymore. And we have to do this probably four to six weeks or so. Two weeks for the incubation period and another two weeks for you to try to heal from this sickness. And then probably two weeks after you heal so that you make sure that you don't transmit it to other people, maybe a little bit longer even. So right now, whatever we're doing, I do not think it's enough in order to reduce the rate of transmission. And it's just gonna keep on going higher and higher. Something that does worry me is that, let's say, you know, the United States can do a full lockdown of every single city in the whole entire country. There's still gonna be a lot of other countries that is not gonna be able to follow the same thing. We basically need a worldwide lockdown. Everybody stays home and then make sure they don't move at all. And somehow we must all have supplies to be able to survive, to be able to eat and stuff. And then let this virus die where it is. They do not have a chance to transmit anywhere. Uh, but this is asking a lot. I don't think this is, can actually happen and some countries cannot even do it. So if you have some countries that are able to do a lockdown and you know they don't have any more transmissions, they don't have any more new cases, you're still gonna have some countries that's gonna be a huge hotspot for this disease. And my worry is just that a lot of people in those countries are gonna die. It's just gonna kind of ferment and stuff and it might actually leak out from the weakest link of the countries here. The second thing I am looking for is that the virus does not mutate and some indication shows that it is already. My worry here for the stock market going forward is that if it does mutate, it means this thing is gonna happen all over again because people do not have immunity of it, right? And if it gets out again, then if they talk about a 2% fatality rate, you're not immune to this thing. You're basically getting it anew, kind of like the flu. And if you have 2% mortality rate and 2% again, this is essentially gonna add up, right? Not quite double, but the more times that you get this, I think the more chances that you're gonna die. From all the news sources I see, all the health experts and stuff, they say a vaccine does not come that fast. It's basically six to 12 months out. So we basically cannot rely on this to just come and save us. So there are talks about other drugs that might help. I don't know anything about these drugs and I don't know how effective they are. If it reduces the fatality rate by a lot, then this might be able to help the stock market a little bit. Well, in the end, it's really, you want people to stay healthy and in turn, the stock market does well. It's not like, you know, the stock market is the only thing, but I am talking about it in terms of the stock market because it's how this disease is directly affecting the stock market and how you should actually invest in it. If you invest in it right now, it's not going to pop back up really, really quickly because we are not going to have suddenly a vaccine we're suddenly not all gonna go back to work because this thing is gonna be drawn out, right? We have these lockdown things for like two weeks. It's probably gonna get extended. So 
no matter what you look at it, you probably shouldn't just jump in and expect the market to just kind of recover from this point forward. Sometimes what I'm seeing is that the market drops down a lot and then the next day is some super record of a stock gain and then this makes you almost fall for it, right? You might all almost think, oh, it's it's kind of recovering. It's starting to recover. Let me buy into it because it's just going up and down and sometimes it's going up a lot. So I think if you're trying to time one of these days for it to pop up the next day, it's probably just a huge gamble because there's no way anyone can consistently go, okay, the next day, it's going to recover a lot. Right now, if you invest into it, you probably have to have this semi long term mentality, probably a year or two years before you can make any money off of this. The sticking point here is that if this gets really, really drawn out, if the whole United States goes into a depression and stuff, if the whole world goes into a depression, goes into this downward spiral loop, I can imagine this going on for like five, 10 years or something. And it'll take this long before it can kind of recover all the way back to the peak right before all this happened in January. Now, over the course of following the news and stuff, I wanna tell you guys the new sites I personally have been following. The first one is I really like the CNN live coverage thing. So just Google this CNN live coverage and then you'll have a web page and it's going to tell you uh, very updated information up to the minute of all the news stuff. And then they'll keep on telling you, oh, whatever schools close, restaurants are closed, uh, whatever state or whatever country, you know, certain people die and things like that. The second thing I like to look at is the John Hopkins University tracker. This tracker gives you worldwide information, but it does not give by the country graphs. For the by the country graphs and the log graphs, which is important because this virus is spreading exponentially, so it helps to see things in a log graph. When it's a straight line in a log graph, it means it's increasing at an exponential rate. Financial Times has a great graphic on this. So if you just Google FT 100th, they want a certain country to say, okay, we have 100 uh, confirmed cases and then they're going to track it from there. So this gives you an idea of a starting point, right? Because if you start from let's say one or 10, um, the data might be skewed a little bit. So you wait until you have 100 confirmed cases and then um, the charts might be a little bit better lined up. Now, if you look at the Financial Times log graph, you can generally see that all the countries are uh, increasing in confirmed cases by about 33% every single day give or take a few percent depending on the country, Italy being a little bit higher, United States is a little bit higher than 33%. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe because some people just refuse to self-isolate themselves. A lot of people, they're just on the beaches in Miami and they're just mingling and stuff. Kind of like an independence type of mentality where you know, I'm not gonna listen to what the government says. Uh, I'm not gonna lock myself down. And I think this is what's causing this kind of disobedience type of thing that's causing a higher rate of transmission. Now, currently our transmission rate is a little bit higher and it looks like it's going to exceed uh, the number of cases as in China. We're only lagging by, behind by about two weeks or so. And if you look at their graphs, and look at the log plots, things are gonna get out of hand very, very quickly at this current rate. And I did say that I do not think we did enough in order to slow down this rate as much as China has, because if we impose uh, the same thing as in Wuhan, where everyone's locked down and stuff, you're not even allowed to go outside, then maybe the maximum number of infections, it'll just kind of taper off on that log graph. But right now, all indications is showing that it's going at a 33% rate. And I think with what we did already, it will probably slow down to maybe 15 to 20% increase every single day, but it's not enough to slow it down to completely flat. So it's gonna get slowed down, but it's just gonna keep on going up. So if you look at the graphs, I think we're gonna have about 1 million confirmed cases this time next week in seven days. So my math is the following. You have the John Hopkins University tracker showing 240 current cases, 80,000 cases in China. So you subtract that out because you know they're kind of self quarantine over there. And all those other cases, I kind of assume they're still spreading, right? So it's still gonna increase at 33% every single uh, day. 
uh, all across the world. That means you have 160,000 people and then you do a 1.33, 33% gain to the exponent of seven. This is about 1.177 million um, in seven days. The seven is for seven days. This is pretty concerning. Like, I don't know. Uh, I'm getting freaked out myself. Uh, you might be able to tell from the tone of my voice. Hearing one million infected, the deaths is also rising exponentially. Anyway, this might lead to a long-term turmoil. Um, it hasn't gotten there yet, but I want to talk about what might happen going forward. I don't want to freak people out, but this is going to freak people out. because. But you have to think about these things um, because you want to prepare for it. When there is long-term turmoil, I don't think there's going to be a disruption in terms of food supplies because the United States makes a lot of food. So it's going to get restocked. We might not get exactly what we want, a certain brand of cereal or something. You're not going to get that. You might not be able to get like uh, wild caught salmon. But I do think government subsidies, that $1,000 checks they're, ta they're talking about, they can do it like two times. But if it gets extended beyond this, people are going to be hurting, right? And it's not that there's going to be a shortage of supply, but I think people are going to get scared and everybody's going to try and hoard. And because people are trying to hoard, there might be some price gouging going on. And at a certain time, people might get desperate enough. If they run out of money, if they're not getting money from the government, they need to feed their family. They, they're out of a job. That is when big issues may happen where people might resort to trying to steal food from other people. They might arm themselves. They might go and try and take it by force if they need to because they have other people to feed. Maybe they want to feed themselves. So this is when things are going to get ugly and I hope things don't get there. But you can imagine how this can turn ugly if it prolongs for a long period of time. And it does not have to do it for that long because people can be out of a job for a month. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck. At that point is when the government needs to kick in the subsidies. So they might need to give a $1,000 injection uh, one time, maybe two weeks later, do, they do it again. So things can get really ugly if they run, run out of money and it's been two months of you know no job for anyone. Nothing is moving. Things are a lot on a lockdown. People are getting protection because they see this being a potential. Not that it's a potential right now, but it can, it can get there. And it's a non-zero chance. I peg it as like 5% chance. It's pretty small, but um, it's out there. It's kind of looming. It's kind of like before when I thought, you know, we're going to get a lockdown and I thought the chances were really little, but then it turns out we, we're getting one. And right now we're not completely locked down and it seems like as more people die, as we get more and more infection, and the government sees that it's not slowing down, we're probably gonna get stricter and stricter um, containment efforts enforced by the government where you know it can go all the way to a super strict lockdown. And this is where I see it going. So to wrap all the way back to the beginning, when should you start investing? Where is the bottom in all this? So you can start investing right now. If you plan to, hold it for several years, you probably have to watch your investment go down some more, uh, but it's very hard to catch it right at the bottom. I personally am not 100% in yet because I think there's more to go. There's probably another whole week of uh, going down, another week or two. Uh, so you see things go up a little bit, but this is, I, I think this is just fake. It's just because it went down so much, people think they're trying to catch the bottom, that there's gonna be a bounce. That's why it comes up a little bit. But you know, the next day you see more bad news, you see more people locking down, you see more people um, dying. It's gonna be like this. It's gonna keep on exponentially increasing for the next week or two. So with all these bad news, you know, 10 news articles come out every single hour, this is going to really hammer the market. So the danger here in investing at the bottom is that this might be prolonged for very, very long. We might get knocked into a depression. So you might need to have a contingency plan in case there's a prolonged depression. If that happens and you have all your money in the stock market, you don't have any cash left. It means somehow you have to dig money back out from your investment. I'm personally trying to go for like two, three years worth of cash. 
uh, that I can live on. But if it goes beyond that, um, it's, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt myself as well uh, because I might have to pull cash out in order to feed myself. That is also a non-zero danger. If this gets prolonged, if this goes on for 10 years, if you invest right now, you might not be able to see any profit at all for the next 10 years. So yeah, that, there's a non-zero chance of this happening. With that said, I'm already more than 50% invested in the stock market right now. Um, I'm probably going to put more in maybe next week or so. I'm going to see things day by day. I hope you guys enjoyed this update. And if you're following the activity on this disease, um, you can just kind of try to look for a slowdown on a per day basis. And you know, this would be one of the indicators I'm looking for. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like, comment down below. Let me know if you think the same about the bottom of the market. And as always, don't forget to push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.